The Naked Body, a top to bottom tour through a human being. This week, The Spinal Cord, written by David Farmer. The spinal cord is a tube made of nervous tissue which runs through a canal in your backbone. The spinal cord sends signals within these nerves out to muscles to cause movement. It also processes and relays sensory inputs resulting from movement as well as sensations from the skin which enter the spinal cord through the spinal nerves. In antiquity, the spinal cord was considered to be a nerve that connected the brain to the body. People knew that reflexes and other basic movements could still persist in animals such as fish and lizards, even if they'd been decapitated. The most famous reflex is probably the knee-jerk reflex, whereby if you tap the ligament just below your kneecap, your thigh muscles contract and your leg kicks out. Today it is accepted that the spinal cord contains a central pattern generator, arising from the activity of special nerve fibres within it. This resembles something like an autopilot. The brain sends general commands like walk or run, which are passed to the spinal cord, which turns on the appropriate patterns of muscle activity. Though we still do rely on sensory cues for important information, this removes the need for the brain to control every muscle during movement. How clumsy would it be if we had to consciously control every bit of moving ourselves? The main clinical issue affecting the spinal cord is spinal cord injury, which could occur, for example, in a traffic accident. If the spinal cord is severed, this is equivalent to cutting through an electrical cable. The lesion blocks signals to and from the brain. This gives rise to paralysis and loss of sensation below the lesion site, which likely includes bowel, bladder and sexual dysfunction. The focus of research into spinal cord injury has been on reconnecting the two ends of the severed spinal cord by regenerating neuronal processes across the lesion site, like patching the electrical cable. Regeneration can occur in mammals when various inhibitory factors are blocked. However, being able to regenerate the spinal cord has not yet resulted in an effective treatment. This may be because the undamaged regions of the spinal cord This may be because the undamaged regions of the spinal cord and sensory inputs are altered after lesioning. The changes either side of the lesion means that this wouldn't necessarily generate a pre-lesion output. We would have to know not just how to repair the severed part of the cord, but also how to make sure that the nerve fibres on either side of the lesion return to their normal function. The difficulty in its repair goes to how complex the spinal cord is. It keeps us going, quite literally.